Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first ever edition of Personal Training Unlocked with Matt Mangle. My name's Josh Chernoff, and I'm just here to help steer the ship. The man who is going to give you all the information that you need about your fitness, about your health, about uh, some wacky and crazy things going on in the world as well. Who knows? We never know what he's going to talk about. It's Matt Mangle. Mangle, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Josh? How's it going, buddy? Oh, it's going well. So real quickly, let's get a background on you. People might be wondering, they know that I'm I'm here for, call it sex appeal, uh, comic relief, whatever it is. They know why I'm here, right? But for you, they explain to them why Matt Mangle is the person who actually should be giving them advice, why you are the one to be unlocking these personal training tips. All right, so... I am Matt Mangle, as you know. I, growing up, was very active in sports. We did a lot of things around the neighborhood. I was luckily enough to grow, uh, grow up in a um, neighborhood where the street uh, parallel to ours was where most of the people came uh, as far as to go to the park to play. Our age, maybe uh, a couple years younger, but people slightly younger, us, and slightly older, we all got together and we played football, we played baseball, we played basketball. Uh, I learned baseball by doing the Sandlot thing. Um, but always active with sports. I, I actually doing, learned baseball by watching the Sandlot. Oh, okay. Well, that, so, well then there you go. that, that yeah. fills a void too. Um, so always active into sports, like playing soccer. Played I played baseball for well, sixteen years. Uh, stopped in uh, two thousand eight because uh, I got I just tired of driving to games all week and working and having kids. So anyway, but um, I uh, went to Temple University over here in Philadelphia and I got um, a degree in exercise and sports science, Uh, graduating, um, well, just before graduation, I had an internship at a facility which had, um, was more so 45, 50 and up as far as membership uh, gym for the community as well as it had residents assisted living, skilled, and so on and so forth that uh, uh, wanted to do training. So I got a look into training people with special conditions, uh, Parkinson's, uh, dementia, um, other ailments, uh, people that were in chair, in wheelchairs, people that um, had mobility issues. I got a real uh, a crash course in dealing with people with chronic conditions and finding ways to get them progress, which the smallest thing for them increased their livelihood, their activities of daily living, just their life, just the life in general, right? The better quality sure. of life. I uh, was there for a year and a half and just found a job uh, at a, well, found, found an opening at a place over here uh, closer to Philadelphia. Uh, this was a suburb of Philadelphia that I was working before, not that people care. Anyway, uh, this gym had a, 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 a physical therapy center on the lower floor. Upper floor was full gym. Um, they had a daycare for people. They had a large pool on the other side of the basement uh, level. Um, and they had a full thing of classes. So I started there as a full-time exercise physiologist, uh, had a full caseload of clients within a couple months, uh, and then took on other duties like maintaining the pool, which I didn't like doing, I shouldn't have been doing anyway, but whatever. Uh, I, I was started, uh, I was a coordinator of the all the 20 instructors of the classes, which uh, at the age of 25, uh, it's like being a kindergarten teacher. It's, it's something oh. I, I don't, want to put on anybody classes are great but you need good people controlling those crazy people uh and then i also did a couple days a week for about a year in the physical therapy center where i learned a lot as far as dealing with people coming out of injury um so all those different things i was there for seven and a half years ended up had the opportunity to open up my own uh, personal training business within a physical therapy center where the physical therapist that was my mentor had moved and I started there for a couple of years. The place got was busy for everybody, but it got too tight, and I found a spot over uh, a couple of miles down the road, and I've been here for 10 years. So I have my own personal training yeah. studio. I've been doing this now 23 years. Uh, I can work with anybody, and everybody should be able to find a way that they can safely work out and get progress. That's, you know, we got here uh, uh, quite on a lengthy trip, but we finally got to the answer. Uh, 23, 23 years experience dealing with people of all levels, there's always a way to have somebody make progress, be it mobility, strength, both, and um, finding the custom trajectory for that person. And cook and that's, butter, I was going to say that because you you had this saying before that I'm sure is going to end up being a, a t-shirt that we're going to release. Um, but 
Your, your key thing was that what you did at Mangle Strength and Conditioning and now with personal training unlocked is it's personal training for anybody, not for anybody, anybody for any body, any type of body. You talked about people who are in wheelchairs, talk about people suffering from Parkinson's, which, you know, sometimes I don't, I don't think there, there are so many different ailments that people can have that I don't think they realize how that can affect them physically as well. Um, but I also don't think people realize how your physical fitness could potentially help you uh, to ward off some future things. Um, but getting back to, you know, I just want to make sure people knew who you were, but getting, getting back to, to what it is we're talking about here. So little uh, inside baseball for everybody. Matt Mangle and I have been friends for like 25 years. Uh, we've, We've wrestled together. We've uh, lifted together. Uh, Mangle Strength and Conditioning. It's Matt's company. You can see that on his hat right there. Um, Matt helped me to get in the best shape of my life at one point. Uh, then COVID helped me to get out of that shape. And then Matt has helped me in getting back into shape again. Um, but today, Matt, we're going to talk about, we, we want to dive right into uh the, the what, what you like to call the parent trap. So let's talk about it, man. You're, you're a, a father of four. I'm a father of three. Um, the parent trap is real and not just for men, uh, for women as well, maybe even more so at times. Right. So let, let's, let's, let's talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Look, so, um, you know, one day you're walking along and you're, you're 17 years old and you're, Strolling around the halls of your high school, uh, you know, just trying to get by, do your homework, and uh, not have anybody bother you. And then you're looking forward to Friday night and Saturday night, and maybe even Sunday night, going out with the buds and doing whatever. Who cares? You can just sit in a bookstore. You can sit at a movie. You can just sit at a diner and drink endless amounts of coffee. Then fast forward about ten more years, and here you are, twenty seven, and. If not already, you're contemplating, you know, well, you know, maybe you're hopefully dating somebody and you're thinking about getting married and kind of going down that road. And uh, 10 years later, on that same plan, you uh, find yourself usually with some kids. And, uh, you know, kids change everything and that's fine. It's perfectly fine. But they do change everything. So that angle's okay if you have kids. Just for our listeners, oh, I just want to make sure, and our viewers, want to make sure you I, all know. I have four, which sometimes feels like I have 85. <laughs> I have three, all right? Um, so you go start off controlling what you can do. You're learning about fitness usually somewhere 14, 15, 16. Maybe you get into it in the 20s or whatever, somewhere in there. And you're you're just basically going in, you're doing your bench, you're doing your 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 maybe back exercises, but let's, let's be honest. It's biceps, it's chest. I don't, I don't think, I think oh, we yeah, were long the beginning, that's all it was, right? It's just, you're yeah, doing, yeah, you're doing you arms and chest. How much can you bench? How much can you curl? That's all anybody ever cared about, right? Not, 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 that, not that you bench it well. No, you bench it you, with you, your arms all the way out, <laughs> all the way out like, to build those triceps. About a 10th of the way down. Mm -hmm. and you drive it up with a loud grunt and a scream and then you rack it. But let me, ask, let me ask you something, though, Sorry. okay? Not, not to step on your toes, but to step all over them for a second here. Yeah. Let me ask you something, because you're talking about this, and I remember back, you know, when we would go to the gym together. We started going to the gym together, I think, in college. But uh, back in high school, sometimes we'd, we'd cross paths. And, sure. you know, I remember how that was. And it, but, but in a way, it was very much, yeah, you had school, maybe you had work, maybe you had, you know, social things. But for the most part, the gym was just something that you could fit into your own schedule. And that oh, sure. I think is the big part of the, what you're getting at here with the parent yeah. trap is your life. When you become a parent, um, your life isn't, isn't yours anymore, right? It's, you have work, you have responsibilities to your spouse, you have responsibilities to your children. So, and even if you don't have children, you're just a grown up in general, you may, maybe you are working, you know, 80 hours a week at your job. So it's all kind of falling into that same, that same thing there. So just kind of, I, I just kind of wanted to no, bring, bring, you're trying to bring me back out of the, out of the thicket, back onto the path. That's what so I'm I, here for. That's what I'm that's here. here. I'm, I'm the, uh, the mangle that. wrangler here. That's my job. There's a, there's a t-shirt. I'm going to, I don't know what the picture would be, but anyway, um, 
like I, I'm going to wander off the path a bit, you know, start looking at the tree bark. Feel, feel free to call me back. It's fine. Um, so yeah, as I was saying before I interrupted myself, what, okay, basically, yeah, what do you said, Josh, you end up in this place where now you're taking care of your wife, you're taking care of the family, you're taking care of what your work and which helps provide for the family. Um, and then you have your kids and when they're little, you're right there in, in at ground zero and you're there for a while. Long story short, the time goes by, you try to fit in what you can, but a lot of times your stuff gets pushed to the back as it should. Mm -hmm. But how, how, how is one to um, try to stay in some reasonable control of their shape in the sense of uh, feeling good about themselves, uh, having the strength they need to put the kid in the crib and be leaning over the crib and patting the kid's back for an hour. Uh, and, and then when the kid finally goes to sleep, you're able to stand back up uh, and not have your back feel like you just got it snapped in half. A uh, true story was, happened to me. Um, it was the, the, for me, there were two things in particular. One was the, the squat out of the chair. Right. So I have my, it, it was my son and he, and I'm sitting there and he was not, you know, some kids can just easily be, uh, transferred right he was not an easy transfer so like if anything shook like if you this was like like carrying a, a bomb right like that like you could not disturb this or it's going off so i remember just having to that strength that core strength and the leg strength just to be able to just stand completely up no i mean we all know once you become, a, I think it's once you become a father, where all of a sudden it's, ugh, you know, to kind of readjust out of the chair. You know, it takes extra effort. You're, you need to let people know that you're now getting out of the chair. Right. They have to know. So you, you while doing or slightly right before you go, oh, we're, um, yep. and, and you that's get it. up. And that people go, well, that's a father. Yeah. It's how you let them know. It's okay. That's it. If it's not yeah. an audible, uh, exit from the chair. Sure. Um, then, then, well, then you're just, you're not, first of all, you're not a man in, in your, uh, in your forties. Oh, and you're not uh, trying and to, you're not a, and you're not a, yeah, you're not a father, a real father. I think this is what everybody could agree on. Sure. What really, what really makes a father a father is the audible exhale when standing up, uh, the grunt when standing up, the exhale when sitting down. Because there's still the, uh, right? Like the, oh man, because I just had the weight of the world on me until I sat down. But now I'm in the weeds. Matt, here's what I want to Here's what I want to ask you though, okay? Yes. Because there are people, uh, anyone who's choosing to still be watching or listening to this at yeah, this point, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, there are people watching this and listening to this who... Maybe they have their first kid right now. They're in that stage you were talking about, right? Where it's it's brand new. Maybe they've got, you know, middle schoolers. Maybe at this point in time, they're looking at it going, okay, everything you're saying, I lived that, but I lived that 20, 30 years ago. My kid's been out of the house for a long time now. Now I'm, I'm, I'm looking at grandkids I want to have the I want to have the the wellness to be able to play with them. I want to be able to get back to I'm in a point now where I can get back to my life. Um, so let's talk about that. These these traps that you fall into. There is time. There's the the scheduling. Yeah, what are some things that you know? What's so advice people decade, can do? Every decade things change. We know that. So with life, uh, we can't be, we can't expect the biggest thing is we cannot expect the the things that we did in our 20s to be able to be done where we are right now necessarily you know you can get back there you can get beyond that but you cannot if you if you've had an absence of, of of really taking care of yourself for 10 years you can't start off where you left off that's going to be disaster um you need to start where you are all right you need to be honest with yourself you need to figure out um i have some things written down here as far as just some concepts to kind of think about to help you on your way about where you where you are actually are versus where you think you are um one thing you talked about was time right so time changes right you're you're, you're here you're working you're you're driving to get groceries you're going to pick the kids up at daycare the key is to find something that you can do to start a routine now a routine or a pattern is typically going to be three to four weeks with consistency not every day necessarily 
but start with something small, right? You hear this all the time with diet, start with something small, but yeah, like just it, do something for yourself. So maybe you start and you're doing a 10 minute yoga, uh, uh, beginning yoga or something like that on, on finding a YouTube channel with somebody who has got some good reviews and has been doing it for a long time. Good experience level. Do that. Right. Okay. Do that 10, 10 minutes, three times a week. Start with that. Just start to get into fitness. Do something to start the programming of doing something active th two, three, four times a week for three weeks. Accomplish that goal first. Put something in there that wasn't there before that's good for you. Right. I'm not talking about alcohol. Alcohol is not good for you. It can be, can be decent every so often. But as far as physical, do something physically active that's good for you. Put that in place for three to four times a week for three weeks. Start with that. Check that box. Once you have that, you're going to, odds are you're going to have noticed the difference as far as you feel a little bit better. You feel less tight, less achy. Uh, you're reprogramming your body. Your body basically gets used to what it gets used to. So when you're a kid and you're moving around and running all over the place, it gets used to that. It's used to firing everything. Uh, you have, a, um, most listeners might know this, but if you don't, all people have a certain number of muscle fibers from birth. How much is used based on, is based upon what you do. If your body sees that you're not using everything as, as, as you, um, you're not challenging things to keep them stimulated, it's going to uh, deactivate some things. You'll still be able to do what you need to do, but you're not going to have as much activity from all the different air muscle areas for that activity to do the same work, which it sees as a survival uh, skill, uh, you know, conserving energy. But when you're trying to remain strong or to gain strength, it can it can be a hinder, right? So you need to show your body something for three to four weeks where it is challenged physically. Resistance training can be one of the things. There's so many things that can fill the void, but just start with something that's challenging yourself physically of uh, 20, 30 minutes, if, if, as little as 10 minutes, three times a week for four week, three, four weeks. Uh, and then your body will start to activate all the dormant muscle tissue. Once you have those fibers active, you're going to be really in the driver's seat as far as doing more things and getting stronger. Um, so put some so put something in place, get a pattern, get a routine set, a change in the routine. Then it can be its own thing. People make a mistake of trying to, uh, they haven't worked out in five years, and then they're just, all right, I'm going to start three times a week, an hour. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do all the strength training. I'm going to do this stuff. And it's, it's, it sounds great. And it can be done. And if you're that type of person, fantastic, you know, uh, kudos to you. But most people aren't going to be that way if it's been such an absence until the pattern is set where they feel the differences and then it can become its own thing uh, along with the other routine that has been set for 20 years or 10 years. Uh, so that's that's one recommendation right there. Um, as far as, so you can always find time. It can be five minutes, 10 minutes. That's, there's and, always that. And one thing that, you know, I'm sure uh, if you ask my wife, I'm probably the last person to give marital advice, but um, and she'll also be surprised to know that I actually listened because for a while when I was trying to get back into the gym and get back into that routine that I, that I had one of, she's, she's always been so incredibly supportive of that. Uh, she's very fit herself. Um, but one thing that she would always say to me was, I don't care if you're going first thing in the morning. I don't care if it's in the middle of the afternoon. I don't care if it's at night, but just let me know. Let me know when it is that you're going to, what is your schedule? Go make your schedule, whatever you want it to be, but what is your schedule? So that's something else that I think people, especially since we're specifically talking, you know, the parent trap here, we're specifically talking about that. I think when you have uh, uh, kids or a spouse or something, sometimes you have to, that's part of the challenge at this stage in our lives is working that schedule around other people because you have to be conscious of that. But it can happen. And I think you'd be surprised that once the people, it might seem like a burden at first, like, oh man, spending all this time at the gym and doing this and there's things. But I feel like, you know, the person that you're with is going to want to see you better yourself. They're going to want to see you get back into that. And maybe, you know, there are a lot of couples that work out together, uh, depending on the age of your kids. You know, that's something that's a great opportunity too, to say, hey, you know, maybe you've got a 15 year old and you go, hey, let's go to the gym together. You know, let me show you yep. something. Maybe that's an opportunity to jump back in. Sure. But yeah, and then you yeah. and your spouse can trade off. You go to the gym, you come back, they go to the gym, you watch the kids. Right. Find a way to make it happen. Put it on the books. Put it in the schedule. Coordinate it. Have have your spouse, or um, you know, if there's no spouse, you can you can talk to your brother, your friend, whatever it is. Have a go-to person that's going to reinforce what you're doing. 
uh, if they can be in on it as well and do their own their thing as part of it as well, it all reinforces, you know, one thing reinforces the other. So that's great. Uh, so that, that comes comes in with one of the other things I had written down was basically like build a team, right? So so have your go to have you have your supporter, right? So you work out, they work out. You guys check in with each other. You keep it going. Um, days when you feel like ah, I really ain't, I don't I don't have it in the, in the tank, brother. Um, they go, you know what? Just go. You'll probably feel better after five minutes. And they go and you come back and you go, you know what? You were right. And then one day they're going to have a, a, an off day. And you know what? You know, you just, just go in there and, you know, get in there and do your thing. So support systems, right? It could be um, if you're, you need extra incentive or you want to have these measuring tools. I mean, look, nowadays you put this on your arm, you put this there. You don't know what, you don't want to know where you put that, but you, all, all things everywhere. And so you can get measurements on everything, yeah. right, Josh? So, well, you know, on your phone, on an app, on a watch, whatever. But look, go and get an annual physical. Maybe it's been 10 years, like like it was for me. Uh, I went last year, got a physical, got a blood work, you know, got the blood work done. I figured things were fine. I eat pretty, pretty healthy. You know, we have some splurges sometimes, but you know, I got a little bit, but came back fine. All right, got those numbers. We got them, stored them away here on the computer. Okay, so uh, things can go measure up against there. So if making need- dietary. Right. That's important. And you're talking about measuring stuff too. Like if somebody get a recheck. Yeah. Yeah. You, you get those numbers. It's the same as, you know, I know a lot of people and, and maybe you're one of these people too, that they don't really, uh, there are a lot of people who will say, don't worry so much about what the scale says, right? Worry about right. how do your clothes fit? Worry about how, you know, how do you feel? Uh, worry about more than anything, you know, your blood work, <laughs> what are you, what are your numbers? Right. Um, you know, you're, 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 you can love the number on the scale and that doesn't mean anything no. if, uh, if you, if you know, you're not doing well physically, you, you, can't, you can't pick one weight. you can pick a target weight. All right. But you have to give yourself a range. You have to give yourself a range of about five pounds when you get to that point. So, okay, let's say, okay, like I'm, I, I was, what I was 205 a couple months ago, I'm about 196 right now. Yeah, I'd like to be around 185 to 190. That's the sweet spot. But, you know, I've been trying to put on a little bit more, uh, build more strength, put on a little bit more muscle for a little bit, and then kind of trim down. So in this 43-year-old body, which has been uh, quite the interesting little – but we're figuring it out. Um, but but long story short, for, with that, for the people just listening to the audio version of this, I don't even know, I don't even know how to describe what that was. Well, but It's like a verbal <laughs> sign language. Um. Like, um, so, so what I was getting at is, um, there's always a way to do things, give yourself a range to get to. So let's say you, your, your target goal weight for whatever reason, let's say it's 185. All right. Realistically, you know, things are going to change. You're going to go to a party at Bob's house and Bob's going to have cooked some ribs and go, Hey, you got to try these. And you can't go, oh, yeah, Bob, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to watch the beach body here. I'm like, no, no, take this. Yeah, you because know, he wants to eat it too. So then you do. And guess what? There's salt in there and you retain water. And all of a sudden you're not 185 anymore. You're 188. But chill. Give yourself right. a range of five pounds. You figure, well, okay, I took in that extra salt, which salt is not bad. We'll get to that in a different episode. Um, but give yourself a range. Okay, get the 188. All right, I had, you know, 75 pounds of ribs there. I'm not going to have that the next couple of days. Let's see what happens two days from now. Then you're back to 185. Give yourself a range. If you start to creep up towards the midline of that range and you made some changes that you maybe you shouldn't have, you go, you know what? I'll tighten back up the bootstraps and you come back down. So recommendation there is give yourself a five pound range, right? Well, one um, one thing people are always really excited about when they start a new diet is their cheat day, their cheat meal. All right. Well, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. We're going to go somewhere with this, but yeah, but what is your all right i'm starting my workout journey right now my my fitness journey right now you had, you had to use the word journey didn't you i i did i you don't you don't have a thesaurus we say path or trail oh, we don't say journey journey, journey. Oh, why, don't like we say journey? why don't we say journey anymore that's life and oh Man, these, oh no, uh, not no, we're not doing that. But you know, but journey. I mean, this is journey. Journey's that's a great band. Too. That's I was just gonna say. Like, come on. If they so, could just get hey, paid for all hey, the time they could use for doing weddings, I mean, hey, that's, that's your journey. Story. That's your journey. Well, that's, that's your our journey. journey. Okay. At, well, we're on this journey out. together. We're on the journey because it's an album that we all listen to. We've been the weddings with props and things of that nature. So it's it's our journey, but it's your journey. Yes. Yes. But okay. Are on your path or trajectory? Let's use trajectory. Trajectory, okay. Trajectory, yes. On your path, I'm starting. 
I'm starting on my my uh, expedition here. Hey, your, um, your Odyssey, Odyssey. My Odyssey has begun. Odyssey. How how yes. long until I can have that cheat right. meal? And can it be an hour after mm -hmm. I start working out? So the answer there is a uh, quick and uh, pretty harsh no. It cannot be. Okay. Um, give you so with the idea of three to four weeks. Let's just use three. You know, because everything breaks down to three. That's another episode. You know, all these things in history. Ah, uh, three blind mice, three stooges, uh, three's company. But we'll get there. Um, three also happens what? to be the. I can't wait to see what episode that's going to be. I don't know. Well, like the Triforce with Zelda, the, uh, the, the three of stooges. Three. A rule three, right? Um, look, three three branches of government. But anyway, uh, three is also funny enough uh, when your body starts to pattern with consistency. If you kind of do a day on day off, it doesn't. But if you're three consistent for three weeks with something, it's a routine or a pattern. Um, so three weeks, six weeks, nine. You can say with me, Josh. Twelve. I would say wait twelve or fifteen because everything evolves. So your first three weeks, you're just trying to get a system going. You're just testing the waters again. Then six weeks, between three and six, you're now, okay, you've got mobility stuff going on. you got strengthening stuff going on. You're dealing with uh, how you feel after doing the strengthening, even though you might not feel it at the time. The next day after, you're a little sore. Your body's adapting. You're, you're adjusting things as time goes on. Nine weeks. You had some of these adaptations already. You've made progressions. You're changing your types of workouts, types of exercises that you're doing for the same areas. You have a more maybe a more diverse plan. Twelve weeks, right? You're 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 three months out. That's kind of like in the clear for a while. So by that point, things have been established and kind of just branded in in sense of I have this. I know this is going to take time. I've built my foundation up and there's ways to do all this. We can talk about another time or you can reach out PT unlocked at gmail.com. Anytime ask questions. Um, that's what I'm here for mainly is to cut through the BS and the red tape of the search engines and the sponsored things. Send me an email, ask me a workout question, show me a video of what you're doing. I'll give you a suggestion. But anyway, um, I would say three months, four months would be a good place because you, you have it down. You have a system, you have a schedule, you have your team. Uh, and then it's not a day. It's not an hour of eating. You pick one thing. All right. You know what? I've been pretty good. I, when I do do bread, even though I, I've been trying not to do bread a lot, I, I go with the Ezekiel bread, which has okay. no, no sugar, pure grains. So uh, is that kind of the thing too, because not to cut you off, but when somebody's starting out here uh, on this odyssey, they yes. are uh, the thought process of, hey, stick with us here. You yes. just have to, you know, you only have to do this for 15 weeks. Like that's going to make somebody like we all get the concept that yep. of what you you should do. Right. Right. Are you suggesting when you talk about things like Ezekiel bread and all, are you suggesting maybe, you know, two weeks in, three weeks in, you're allowing somewhat of maybe what strays a little from your diet, but that straying is not like, let's say, oh man, I love a good, I, I don't know what I'm saying, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? But let's, I love peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. And I love it on white bread and I love the oh. fattiest, worst peanut okay. butter with the most additives ever. And I love my jelly to practically not even have real fruit in it. So right. maybe the suggestion is, hey, you know, you're two weeks into this. You want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, go help yourself. Maybe you have some Ezekiel bread. Maybe it's natural peanut butter. Maybe it's, you know, is that kind of what people along can way, do along the way? Don't overload yourself by, do, by doing too much at one time. First, get the pattern set. Then, you know, this is a good place to, um, uh, there's a couple of nutritionists in the area that I recommend people to when they're really trying to get something specific for them based upon their history, their um, heredity, all those type things as far as starting out and tracking things. But it's really good to get a consult with, with a, a nutritionist that's active in sports or competitions themselves. 
uh, obviously active in fitness themselves and has have the knowledge base. Um, that would be the best bet if you can find somebody in your area to sit down with them. After three weeks, okay, it's it's going, it's moving. That could be a time where six weeks where you really start to watch your diet and re- track what you're eating mm-hmm. and just try to pick better versions and start to watch portion size. Um, so that would be kind of what you're talking about, Josh. Go, always, yeah. always go for the more real option. Obviously, there's a lot of things that are processed. Now, there's if you're going to go processed and you're having Ezekiel bread versus processed and having, you know, eating a whole sleeve of Ritz crackers, mm-hmm. probably better to go the root of the other. Obviously, they're not exactly comparable, but you get my point. Go yeah. more real. Go the ingredient list should be as short as possible. No added sugars, sugar. Well, again, we're going to get that, but sugar. Ugh. But here's, you know, you sugar, here's what but else like, we're going to do, Matt. Sugar is terrible. Yeah. Here's what else we're going to do. What we're going to do. We're going to give everybody a light at the end of the tunnel, though. Right? Oh, well, there is one. Because what you don't I mean, want. Like three months. Well, no, actually, buy it now. Yeah. Go we're going to buy it me. now. Buy it now. Freeze it. But here's freeze the deal, it. Okay. Yeah. And all the instructions are going to be there. Yes. Because and you're gonna and people might think to themselves right now, this is weird. How is personal training unlocked? Sponsored by working with, powered by Buckeye Brownies. But this oh, is why. Yeah, because when you're gonna have a cheat meal, when that time comes, when you have been working your rear end off for months and you want that cheat meal. Man, you do not want to waste it on that sleeve of Ritz crackers, right? You don't want to waste it on that. When you want a cheat meal, like we, you know, I've always seen The Rock, Dwayne Johnson always posts, he's posting on social media of his epic cheat meals, right? Whatever the case is, we've got the most epic cheat meal. We're talking about half pound brownies and blondies. Half, half pound. pound. Listen. Around blondies. That's not, you know. Listen. Yes. I'm just saying split it with your wife, split it with your spouse. I did Quarter. my wife, my wife and I split, we got one. Uh, they, they were kind enough to send it out to us. Um, and I, you know, thank God I'm only going to be doing this every 13 weeks because otherwise this is just going to just become a, a whole different type well, of podcast. It's special. It's special, man. That is, we had the snickerdoodle blondie. That was the hit at our house. Yep, yep. man. A half pound, my wife and I, so much of it is left. I'm just going to, you know, let my kids, these, the, you know, they're still young, still have fast metabolisms, but, um, oh my God, delicious, absolutely delicious Buckeye Brownies. You go to BuckeyeBrownies.com, uh, follow them on social media, uh, on Instagram at Buckeye Brownies, uh, and Matt, we've got a special we got a, a special promo code yeah. for them too. Let, let, let us let us uh, help you with your cheat meal that you earn over the course of two months, three months. There you go, Josh. There you go. What is the what is the uh, the code? The promo code is my fandom. M Y F A N D O M. My fandom. And now you're wondering why my fandom? Why is that the promo code? Well, it's simple, because my fandom is presenting. Personal Training Unlocked, my fandom, is an incredible app. Uh, Matt and I have been very uh, closely associated with this app. You trust me. I even have it right here on my water bottle, which, by the way, it's another thing. Hydration, right? Yeah. Hydration. And um, electrolytes another day, too. Yeah, we, we've got we've got a lot. This podcast is, is just getting started. But um, myfandomapp.com. Right now is available for iOS. Android is on its way. It is it is getting there uh, for all you green bubble people um, hey. like Matt. Um, but uh, but I love, I love my green bubble. It's that's that's a different show. I love, um, I love my Android. For personal training unlocked after dark. Uh, you and your green bubble and your Android. But uh, go to myfandomapp.com. What my fandom is. Think about it as almost like an ancestry.com for your sports history, your sports legacy, right? You get to create your own profile of every single game, every single event, whether it's baseball, basketball, football, 
professional wrestling, boxing, MMA, expos, right? Expos as well. We're going to be adding even some some uh, fitness expos will be available on there as well. So you're going to want to go right now, make your profile 100% free. Go on there, start adding your photos. We want to see it. Not only do you add them for your own profile, but every single event that you add it to, now you are a part of that history. You get to be a contributor to that history. People get to see your odyssey. They get to watch your, uh, 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 your, uh, I don't know what other words are there. What they have memorabilia in their man cave. What? what yes. They have memorabilia. memorabilia. For instance, you go to memorabilia. If you look, you're going to see like, for instance, this championship right here. Um, the wrestling showcase championship that was gifted to me by a professional wrestler named Matt Cardona, uh, after he won that championship and then won the other one over here. Um, this app is is uh, it's incredible, it's groundbreaking, and it's something we want you to be a part of, uh, and we want to see all of your photos on there from all the events that you've attended. Uh, we also want to see you using that promo code, and this is what I want to see here. I would love for you to send to uh, Matt is uh, what are you at PT Unlocked right on social media? So send Matt pictures. Here's what you're gonna send the picture of. You're sending a picture of a, of, of a, a Buckeye brownie. Okay. Go. It's going to be a screenshot of the my fan of your profile on my fandom app. Then you're going to send him a picture of the Buckeye brownie that, because trust me, when this thing arrives, you open up that box, you're going to want to take a picture of this. I know I did. You're going to take that picture. It's not just going to be in the box. No, that picture is going to be in your freezer. That picture is going to be that brownie sitting in your freezer. And then you're going to post. In 13 weeks, you're going to post the picture of you in tremendous shape biting into that brownie. That's the goal. That's what we're doing here. Personal Training Unlocked right. and Buckeye Brownies and my fandom. That's right. I think uh, 10% off, right? 10% off. Yeah. And uh, look, uh, uh, ptunlocked at gmail.com. You can reach me anytime. Any questions you have regarding your fitness start, you know, uh, where you're at now, you've been doing it for a while, you're kind of stagnating, you want some other options, you want to kind of change things up, you're having some issues, uh, maybe something's a little tight, something's a little sore, uh, something's just not feeling right when you're doing certain movement, whatever it is, that's what I'm here for. So I'll, I'll get to the emails as I can, as soon as I can and, and get back to you. Just you know, short thing, what's going on. Hi, my name's whatever. And this is what's happening. Maybe a, a brief video clip of, of you doing an exercise. You want, you want, you know, a critique on whatever it is. Uh, I can help you out there. That's another purpose of this show is to kind of just get beyond the, the, the nonsense of trying to find something in a search engine that's not sponsored uh, and get the legit information that can help you out. And I could be the guy for you. So uh, feel free to reach out anytime uh, on social media at PT Unlocked on Instagram, uh, X. I don't quite use X as much, but you know, the Instagram's fine, whatever, you know, whatever works for you works for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm like, this is, we could go so, so many ways with, with this stuff, but basically the parent trap is you're fending for other kids, other people and yourself. Um, but find the time for yourself, start. And then as you need, if you need things along the way, reach out to me or whoever, uh, and then, um, just adapt things as time goes on every three weeks, your body's in a pattern. You're getting to make changes by three, four, six weeks, you're, or three, four, six months, huge differences. And you're going to feel so much better about yourself and everything is going to be moving easier, less achy joints and things like that, especially if you've cleaned the diet up. So just take care of yourself. Look, I mean, this is our machine. We don't, we don't get another one. So. Um, you know, one day they'll be able to throw you up on a hydraulic lift and, uh, change a couple things out in 20 minutes and, and give you that, that, that terrible bill, but, uh, and then send you out in the world, but we're not there yet. So, you know, take care, take care of your tissues, take care of your muscles, take care of your bones, your ligaments, your tendons, uh, try not to do stupid stuff. Look, if you want to do stupid stuff. Great. Train yourself for it. Look, speaking of doing stupid stuff, you, you know, I've done, I kind of fell into the Spartan race, uh, uh, stuff back in 2016 and. I've even accomplished a couple ultras, and I am not an ultra runner. I am a baseball player from high school into an adult league. But I took on the challenge. I did the five mile race. I've done, which is their sprint. I've done their super a number of times, which is an eight to 10 mile. And I've done the beast, uh, even up in Killington, which has like 7,000 feet elevation. Um, but every year, starting this past year, 
which was my return to doing an ultra. I only did one before in 2017. And then with uh, two kids, Holy Communions being on, of course, that day, each of the following years. And then COVID happened and took that out for two years and then uh, had something else to, get, to go to uh, two years ago. This past year in April, I did mine again over in Jersey at Mountain Creek Ski Resort in Vernon, New Jersey. Uh, I did the ultra and it's going to be there each year now in April. So guess who's doing that again in April? So 43 year old man, I got four kids. I can tell you I, who isn't. Well, look, hey, <laughs> hey, uh, let's get you back into that shape. You were in uh, back in L.A., sir. Oh, um, man, I was in. We'll get you there. I was in great shape. You want to talk okay. about the parent trap? I think, this is, I think people need to write uh, at so says Chernoff and go, uh, you know, Josh, why don't you hop on board with Matt there and then let's see what that three, six, nine, da, 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 da week I, uh, looks like. I will tell you, you know, obviously Matt and I, you know, we talk all the time and, and, and Matt is, a, you know, even when I'm not lifting with him, it, I'm following pretty much everything that I, I learned from you over the years. Um, yeah. And the, the one thing that I can say is the one thing that stands out to me from all the different things that you said is consistency and something you just kind of mentioned, which is challenging yourself. Right? right. And all kidding aside, whether it is challenging yourself with something like the beast, like some incredible thing, may, or maybe it's just, hey, I want to be able to do a turkey trot walk. You know, yeah. like that's it. Maybe that's where you're at. Challenge yourself. Find something that is realistic for you and and set that challenge. And once you've achieved that, once you know you can do that, challenge yourself again come up with that next yeah, thing put, right? put that uh, you know put that uh goal out there maybe there's something a year from now you want to do that you tried to do last year and didn't work out too well with your kids some some physical thing whatever it was a hike uh but train for it and, and get there and do it once you do it then you can do it better because you've done it uh just don't, don't stop challenging yourself that, that biggest thing is we fall into this pit of uh you know just where's your sitting here doing the old uh, ooh, 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 ooh. And then, you know, we're, we're hunchbacks. We're staring at our phone. Yeah. We're out with our wife. We we're out with our wife on a date night and we're sitting there. I saw Put people the phone down, see what's around you, experience what's around you, focus on what you're doing. And guess what? The phone will still be there. I not melt your brain. I Put was out. Down. Oh my God! Put the phone down, yo! Don't look now at me. Yell, like, now he's yelling down. at people. Sorry. I was out with my family over the summer, and I I saw this couple sitting in a booth next to us, and I oh. timed. I don't remember what it was, but it came to something like twenty something minutes. Yeah. They did not look up from their phones or say a word to each other. Um, mm -hmm. Now, is that a commentary on our phones, or is that a commentary <laughs> on their well, marriage? Who can say? Well, um, in the gym, you know. Like, like have it with you. Want to listen to to music, whatever. That's fine. But like, just try to separate yourself from that and just really get into the mental zone of. Talk about an doing. episode, gym etiquette. That's an episode. Oh boy, gym etiquette. Gym etiquette sounds like uh, sounds like an actor's name. Like here, here's, here's a meteorologist, uh, James Etiquette. Hey Jim, how are you? Oh great, yeah, this, you know. But yes, gym etiquette with a G Y M. Yes, gym etiquette. That's going to be like seven. It's going to be an anthology. Yeah, it's going to be like our Lord of the Rings here. It's going to be. It's going to be quite. It's going to be quite the journey. Who shall not pass? Step aside, son. I'm going to do some burpees over here. And on that <laughs> note, <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. Hey, look. Tune in again. We're, we'll, we'll fine tune. This is what we're, this is what, I mean, yeah, please uh, send something over to, you know, at my fandom app, um, which of course my fandom presents this, let them know that you enjoyed this show. Also make sure that you watch us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash my fandom app, or I think it's youtube.com slash at my fandom app, I think is how they're doing it now. I don't know. Just Google it. Um, wow. But don't Google how to work out. Don't Google your fitness for that. You go at PT unlocked. You send it to, uh, uh, what is it? Is it PT unlocked at Gmail? PT unlocked at gmail.com. And you will get a response from Matt Mangle, who is a certified strength and conditioning specialist. 
and a bachelor's of science in exercise and sports science degree professional 23 years in the business. I am here to help. Um, I, I try to help all my clients as best I can. Uh, one of the reasons of doing this podcast is reaching people beyond the ge- ge- geographic area of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania and reaching people from all over the world and trying to help, trying to make an impact. So please help me unlock this brain of mine and, 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 and we'll help you as best we can. And I'll be Aaron, here to hopefully shield you from some of the things that come out of that brain. Uh, you uh, don't know. In a while. <laughs> hey, finish that. Put that phone down. This Sorry. is good. Now people think this is what we're here. People in this gym need uh, to go over some gym etiquette. We're going to get to that episode soon enough. Hey, Uh, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for the first episode of Personal Training Unlocked with Matt Mangle. Matt, see you next time. Sounds great, buddy. Keep on lifting.